A1. Um, so in this one right here, right, we're just simply looking at um, the energy levels for the hydrogen atom. Now, one of the things um, about this um, uh, system right here, right, uh, I don't have the picture of the spectrum. So in the visible light spectrum, right, you, you see four different, um, you know, um, emissions, um, right, one at 410, 434, 486, and 656. Um, but there's also other emissions that happen, right? And so this is what's referred to as like one series, and then there's a different series as well, um, and and so forth. Um, and so, you know, when, when we talk about light, we're not always looking at just simply the lowest energy transition when we're seeing something, um, you know, being um you know emitted or absorbed right it could also be something that's somewhere in the middle right that doesn't necessarily have to be from the n equals one to the n equals two level right it can be an absorption from like the n equals two to the n equals four or something along those lines um but you know visibly right we can only look at a certain region of you know with our eyes of the electromagnetic spectrum right but we can use spectrometers of different types to actually look at um, the other regions there, right? And, you know, that becomes extremely important if you ever, you know, go into thinking about any kind of like, you know, astrochemistry or, or astronomy, um, when you're trying to figure out, you know, like what kind of elements you have on other planets, you have to start looking at, you know, a wide variety of, of wavelengths, um, and try to detect, you know, if you see, um, certain characteristic, right? Kind of like last week when we were doing the problems related to the, to the Mars rover. Right, you can use a whole bunch of different types of spectrometers on that to kind of figure out what's the um, composition of you know the 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 Earth uh, on Mars, um, like the soil on Mars and stuff like that. Right, to to get an idea, like oh, you know, could there be water? Because you know you have hydrogen, oxygen, and so forth. Anyways, back to the problem. So for this problem right here, right, it's just simply part one is fill in the table below, calculate the frequency for each emission line in hertz, calculate the energy of each emitted photon in joules, right? So this is going kind of back to, um, you know, the, the problems from, you know, the, the first week where all we have to really do in this case, right, is that we have E. Uh, come on, you were just working pen. So this is a very common thing that happens with the surface. I don't recommend the surface for anyone in all honesty. I know in the advertisements, they make it seem as if it's this like amazing thing, but I've had so many problems with the pen never registering. And if I like do something for just a brief moment that it won't catch, um, which is extremely frustrating when doing these streams, uh, right? Cause you want it to work. Uh, all the time. Um, but it's what I'm stuck with um, from the university. And so I'm just going to do what I can with it. Um, yeah. So if you're going to get a tablet thingy, don't get a Surface. Um, unless they've like drastically improved from, from this iteration. Um, because the pen is garbage. Anyways. Um, right. So the equation that we would use, right. I'm just going to use my finger here. And so it's going to be very big and very ugly. Um, is H or sorry, uh, energy is equal to right HC over lambda or H nu, right? And nu is the frequency, and lambda is uh, the wavelength, and C is the speed of light in these cases. So, all we really have to do in these instances, right, is we can calculate what the energy of the photons are, um, and then we can rearrange things, right? And so, the other thing, too, right, is that. Um, in terms of figuring out what um, the frequency is, right, you just simply have nu is equal to c over lambda um, in that case, right? And that'll give you the, the frequency as well. So all it is pretty much for the most part is a plug and chug thing. The biggest thing to really paying attention to are the units, um, right? So if I just do this first one right here, right, we have a wavelength of 410 nanometers, right? So we have E. energy is equal to H, right? And so H is Planck's constant. So that is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times the speed of light, which is, um, what is it? 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second.
right? And that's going to be over the wavelength, right? And the wavelength is 410 nanometers, right? And so what we have to do, right, for units to cancel out. So right now, right, we have joules, um, um, right, seconds, and then meters over seconds, right? And so the seconds cancel there. And so now we have joules, meters, and then we have nanometers at the bottom. And so we want the meters to cancel out. And so one thing we know is that um, we have one times 10 to the negative nine meters per nanometer, right? So that's the conversion factor. So, a nan so you know, uh, one meter is one times 10 to the ninth uh, nanometers, right? So that's the conversion there. So the nanometers cancels out in that case. Uh, so we have that. So all we end up with then is meters then canceling too, uh, right there. So we end up with joules, right? Which is an energy unit that we want and works well. So if I plug that in now to my calculator, right? What I have is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 410 times one times 10 to the negative ninth comes out to being 4.845 times 10 to the negative 19, right? I have 4.84 on there, right? So there's probably just a small difference in, in sig figs when I was writing things down in that case, right? So, uh, so in that case, right, so this is then 4.84. E is equal to 4.85 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Um, right. So, so that's how you would, you know, calculate, you know, just do simply do that, that, that energy conversion there. Um, and so then the other th question, right, is then the frequency. So then, you know, what we can do for the frequency is either we can use the wavelength or we can use the energies of the, the photon, right? Both of them are just extremely, uh, uh, um, similar, they're very closely related. Um, but what we can just simply do, right, to get the frequency, right, so that's just simply nu is equal to the speed of light. So that's 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Divide that by, again, 410 nanometers times 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters over nanometers, right? So now Nanometers cancels, meters cancels. We end up with one over seconds, right? And that's what the unit of frequency is, right? A hertz is just simply one over second, right? They're that. That's the same thing. So if I take that, plug that in, so we have 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 410 times 10 to the negative ninth. What I get is 7.31 times 10 to the 14th, right? Which is what I have right here. Um, 7.31 times 10 to the 14th, um, right? One over seconds, it's the same as Hertz, um, right? And so that's all you do. And you do that same approach through all of them. One thing you could do too, right? Instead of uh, going directly to calculate what the energy of the photon is, you could just calculate the, the frequency and then you can plug the frequency into that equation for energy, right? Where you just multiply the frequency by Planck's constant. And then, you know, you get the same thing in those cases, right? Everything comes out to being joules. Um, so one important thing always, right? Is you wanna make sure you're doing the dimensional analysis and you're looking at how does um, everything even out? in those cases. Um, but I'm not going to do the rest of those. <sighs> like the worst part is, is that it's not like a battery issue with the pen. It's just simply that the screen doesn't register it sometimes. Like it registers my finger, but it's not registering anything with the pen. I mean, it could just very well be that I have a faulty pen. Um, but anything that I've ever found has never ever indicated that to me. Um, anyways, okay, so right, so next one, using the Rydberg equation calculation, calculate the energy of each energy level for the hydrogen atom, label the diagram, right? And so in this case right here, um, uh, right? I just simply have the n equals one up to n equals six levels. And so all we have to do is just simply use the Rydberg equation, right? And so the Rydberg equation is uh, equal to, um, you know, the energy of the energy levels 
is equal to negative r. And r is the Rydberg constant, right? So that's always 2.1799 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times z squared over n squared, right? And so what z is, is the um, essentially the atomic number of the um, atom or ion that you're looking at. And then n is the energy level that you actually want to look at in those cases, right? So uh, for the hydrogen atom, right, z is going to be equal to 1, right? And then the n value, right, is just simply the n values that we have right here that we would want to apply in those cases. And so if we just go through, right, what we can do is for that first one, right, energy is equal to negative r, and r is 2.1799 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times one squared over one squared, right? And so one squared over one squared is one. And so for that case, right, that first energy level is just simply gonna be equal to the negative of the Rydberg constant. Now, one important thing I wanna, I wanna emphasize, right, is that the energy levels for atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals and all of those things, they're always gonna be negative. And that has to do with the fact that, right, zero is gonna be our reference point and what we're seeing zero is, is when essentially the electron gets ejected from the atom or the ion, um, right? And so then that means, right, if that's the point where you have to like put in enough energy to get to that point, then everything has to then, you know, be essentially listed as being at a negative energy. And that's why, you know, lower energy orbitals um, are always going to have lower n values, right? And that's, you know, how that relates there. So the magnitude, um, right, is always going to be higher for, um, you know, the lowest levels, right? But they're always going to be negative, right? They're always going to be extremely negative numbers. You're never going to have a positive, um, you know, energy level, uh, um, you know, energy, sorry, of any kind of atomic orbital or molecular orbital, because the moment you reach zero, right, that electron is gone, that, you know, it's, it's been ejected, um, it's doing, you know, its own thing somewhere else. <laughs> so that's a thing to, to, to keep in mind, right, is that energy levels for atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals are always going to be negative. Um, right, right, that, right, that right there was easy, though. So, right, so n equals 1 is just simply equal to negative 2.1799 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, right? So if we do then uh, another one, right, we can do E is equal to negative 2.1799 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times one squared over two squared, right? So now we're looking at the second energy level. Now it's not just simply gonna be equal to R, you know, now that's actually gonna change, right? And so this becomes one, this becomes four, right? So we're looking at one fourth, the energy level here. And so if we plug that in, what we get in that case is negative 2.1799 times 10 to the negative 18 times one over four. <clears throat> and so what you get is negative 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, right? And I think that's what I have on the key. Yeah, right? And that's all you do for all the energy levels, right? Is that you just simply apply it um, in that way between all of them, right? You just apply the Rydberg equation and you're able to to, to get all of the, the info and stats there. Um, cool. Um... Next question, right? So then part C, uh, the pen's back finally. Um, right, so now what it's asking is essentially to figure out, you know, what the energy difference is between two different um, energy levels, right? And then like what then a photon that would be emitted when you're going from one energy level to the other or that it would have to be absorbed, right? Going from one energy level to the other um, in those cases, um, right? And so when an excited, atom emits a photon, its energy decreases from E final minus E initial. Um, since energy must be conserved, the energy of the emitted photon has the same magnitude, but opposite sign. What is the lowest energy photon that can be emitted if the electron ends up in the following levels? N equals final, in, what, in, a, in which level did the electron start, right? So for any of these things, the 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 if you're going to be emitting a photon, right, then that means that the starting orbital has to be higher, right? It has to have a higher n value than the, the final orbital in that case. And so the closest two of them are is always going to be then the, 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 the smallest amount of energy difference, right? So in this case right here, right, when n is equal to one, then that means that it has to start off in the n equals two level. 
in the case of, you know, if, when it's n equals two, right, in that case, it has to be the n equals three level, right? Those are going to be then the closest ones in those cases, right? n equals three, right? It's going to be, it, it'll have started in the n equals four level. You know, if, uh, um, you know, that's always going to be the cases, right? Is that, you know, one that's, you know, directly afterwards is always going to be closest in energy in those instances. Now, in terms of the photon energy, right? There's two approaches that you can do to this. One, since in B, you already calculated what all of the different energies are for the different energy levels, all you have to do is just simply subtract them, right? So, um, you know, in the previous part of the problem for the N equals two level, right? We had said that the energy was equal to negative uh, 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19 joules <clears throat> in that case, right? And then the N equals one level, we calculate that to be negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 9 or 18 joules in that case. So the easiest thing that we could do, right, is we could just simply subtract final from initial, right? And so that would just simply be negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules minus negative 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And so what that will equal then is negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 minus negative 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19. And so that comes out to being, right, an energy difference is equal to negative 1.635 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, right? So that's what the energy difference is. And so that's what the, the photon energy would be too, but as a positive value, right? Because photons can't have negative energy, right? They always have to have positive energy, right? They're always storing energy in those instances. And so it has to be a positive value, right? So because the energy, you know, the way that you can think about why it's negative for the delta E, but it's positive for the photon is that the change in energy, right? The system that you're looking at, right? The hydrogen atom that you're looking at is going to be losing 1.635 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, right? That's how much energy you're going to be losing uh, from the system, right? By going from the n equals two to the n equals one level. The photon then, right, is going to be gaining that energy. And so that's why it's going to be the opposite sign um, in those cases um, for, for what's happening. Um, and then same thing, right? So if you have a photon comes in, right, and excites an electron, right, that's going to have a positive value there, but the delta E value is going to be positive for that then. And that's because the system is absorbing that energy, right? So it's always going to be a positive value for the delta E there and going upwards. So that's a, an important thing to, to think about. And remember, uh, especially on exams, right? When you're when you're thinking about signs, um, right? Photons are never going to have a negative sign, um, right? They're always going to be positive signed. And if you're losing energy from your system, right? It's always going to be a negative sign. And if you're gaining energy, it's always going to be a positive sign. Now, um, the second part of this right here, right? So, um, if you hadn't gone through and done B, right, and you were trying to calculate what the photon energy could be, um, again, that's very straightforward and very simple. Because all you're really doing, right, is if if I were to write out the individual parts here, right, the delta E value is going to be equal to negative R Z squared over um, N final squared minus negative r of z squared over n initial squared, right? That's what the, the full equation essentially would be in this case. What we can do is we can just simply pull out everything that's the same so that what we end up with then, right, just simply using a little bit of math, right, is we have negative r times z squared and then here, what we would just simply have is one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared, All right? And so that right there, both of those are the exact same equation and it should give the exact same results, right? And so if you didn't do part B, if you jump straight into part C to, to work on that, right? You could do this right here. Um, so, right, so if we do that now, right? We have delta E, so negative R is negative I'll just simply, you know, simplify it down like right? 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules um, times z squared, right? So that's one squared in that case times one over 
n final, right? So the final energy is two, so this is gonna be two squared minus the initial, right? So that's gonna be three, so one over three squared. In that case, right, so two is four, this is nine. <clears throat> and so then, you know, this whole thing right here just simply becomes one over, no. I'm not gonna do all that. Let's just keep it simple, right? One over four, one over nine. So if we plug that in, negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 times one squared times, and now in parentheses, I have one over four minus one over nine. And that comes out to being negative 3.028 times 10 to the negative 19 joules in this case, right? And so again, right, the photon energy is gonna be positive, And so that's what you get there, right? And that's all you would have to do for then, you know, part three and that part right there too, right? You just simply apply those equations um, and you would get those answers. And so again, the important things to remember, photon energy is always gonna be positive. Delta E is positive when it's absorbing a photon, it's negative when it's releasing a photon. Those are, those are two important things.